In the previous video, we explored the Alexandria Arms Hotel. Before entering, we encountered a pack of wild dogs and the body of a wastelander. Inside his pockets was a note and a key belonging to somebody called John. The note reads, Billy, I'm sorry I stole it. You deserve to have it back. Remember the old scrapyard north of Bethesda ruins. Look in the burned out bus in the northwest corner near an old red boxcar. Tell Laureen I still love her, and I'm sorry for everything. I hope somebody finds this before the buzzards tear it to pieces. Your loving brother, John. So, John stole something from his brother Bill and stashed it in the scrapyard north of the Bethesda ruins. John also mentioned someone called Laureen. Not much is known about her, she's not even mentioned in the official Fallout guide, but the Fallout wiki says that she and John are married, which makes Bill her brother-in-law, but enough about that. On to the scrapyard. At the entrance to the scrapyard, there's a spot for a random encounter. For me, it was three friendly hunters who gave me the choice to purchase some meat. What do you need? Well, sure. We've got plenty for the moment. I agreed and quickly discovered the only meat they had for sale was strange meat, which we all know is code for human flesh. Nevertheless, I bought the entire stock with the intent of trading it with Eugene at Little Lamplight for cave fungus. But before I let them get away, I pondered, what if these hunters were hunting more than your average raider? More than your average slaver? Perhaps they were killing innocents and trading their flesh for profit. I couldn't let them leave. As soon as I saw the positive karma gained, I knew I had done the right thing. If only life was as straightforward. As for the scrapyard itself, it has a couple of interests, but mostly it's filled with wrecked cars, twisted metal cobwebs, and radioactive pools of sludge. To the right of the entrance is the scrapyard's office. Bear in mind this will only be here if you selected the contract killer perk, which becomes available at level 14. Inside the shack you will find Daniel Littlehorn and his associates, which will all be covered in a later video. Further inside, we can try to locate John's stash. He mentioned it being inside a rusted bus to the northeast corner by a red boxcar. Following these instructions leads us to an ammo crate, tucked between uh, a stack of rusted cars and sort of in the bus, down these steps. That's what I'm trying to get at. We can use John's key to get inside where we find a collection of skill books, Grognak the Barbarian, Guns and Bullets, and a US Army 30 Handy Flamethrower Recipes. A part of me doesn't want to believe that this is it. John threw away his relationship with his brother and left his wife behind for three skill books. What was John's endgame here? To sell them to the highest buyer? To read them and become a better fighter? It just doesn't make sense. It all boils down to John being a petty thief who threw away his life for three skill books. Moving on to the last thing of interest, we have another encounter, this one scripted. Upon approaching, you should hear a snarling dog and gunfire. Around the corner, you see said snarling dog, a dead scavenger, and several raiders. You can either help the dog or simply watch. Nine times out of ten, the dog will survive. But if he dies, you've just missed out on a potential companion. The scavenger was the dog's previous owner who, for obvious reasons, can no longer take care of him. So we take over instead. That's what should have happened anyway. Instead, all I found was the scavenger's corpse, several dead raiders, and no dog. I used console commands to resurrect the scavenger, but every time I did so, their head exploded, without fail. I also resurrected the raiders, but their new lives were a little less explosive. As for dog meat, that's the dog's name. He had simply vanished. I contemplated reloading an earlier save, but then I was curious as to where he ran off to. So with another console command, I teleported to his location where I found him heading for Megaton, or at least in that direction. I waited 24 hours to see if that's where he was going, but after teleporting again, I found myself inside Springvale, the town not too far from Megaton. I was also inside a rock. One TCL command later, and I was free. 
but Dogmeat still continued walking. Now, if you recruit Dogmeat and then dismiss him, he doesn't head back to the scrapyard. Instead, he heads to the entrance of Vault 101, which is a stone's throw away from Springvale. I thought to myself, maybe I was too slow to aid Dogmeat with the raiders, so he left to head for the dismissed location. I ran up the road to the vault's entrance and waited an hour. That should have been enough time for him to make it there. When the hour was up, he had vanished. Again. So I waited 12 hours, simply to get a good amount of daylight more than anything else, and teleported to Dogmeat for the third time. Looking on the map, we can see that Dogmeat had wandered past the entrance to Vault 101 and was heading towards Fort Independence. I had a feeling that Dogmeat didn't actually have a goal in mind and was instead randomly wandering. So I said hello, complimented his good dental hygiene, and made him my companion. And there we have it. The Scrapyard, John Stash, and Dogmeat, the canine companion, who for some reason went AWOL. If you enjoyed today's video, then consider leaving a comment, liking the video, sharing it with a friend, subscribing to see more, and enabling notifications to avoid missing any activity. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.